Let me know when, Ange. Give me a countdown. That's the thing about studio. Good being with you tonight, and thanks for joining in uh, online, and also those that are in the studio today. We have a few in the studio, and uh, yeah, yay. So um, uh, last week, uh, we, we started off with the gospel, and we're, we're talking about sharing life with others, to share life, and really, when, we, when it comes to life, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and uh, no man will come to the Father. No man can have eternal life except through Jesus Christ. Uh, we should never underestimate the power of the gospel. Paul says, uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. And so as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can bring life to others. Last week we went over the um, uh, what is the gospel and gospel means good news and um, we recognized that uh, when Jesus began his ministry he started off with um, this statement and we can read it in Mark chapter 1 verse 15 it says uh, as Jesus began he says the kingdom of God is at hand so to be into the in the kingdom of God uh, is uh, there, there is the possibility of being in the kingdom of God. And Jesus then gave the way, and the way is one of two, or to do two things, not just one or the other, but to do both. He says, repent and believe in the gospel. So we went over that last week. When it comes to repentance, there is a turning, uh, not just from sin, but the direction that we're heading in. We change from a, uh, this headlong rush uh, a, a highway that would lead to hell and uh, we turn and we turn to Jesus and we turn to the one that is able to give us life as we believe in the gospel, the good news of who he is and what he did for us on the cross. So last week we really went in, if you, if you didn't catch it, you can go back and catch it. It's under uh, Ready, Set, Go and sharing light or life with others uh, is part one. And today we're going to continue on uh, uh, ministering life or, or Jesus, ministering Jesus to others. Um, so we're going to get started with that. Um, just before we do, once again, uh, this, the problem last, as we, we went into it last week, the problem that every single human has, there's not one exclusion to this, is the problem of sin. And we recognize uh, the the extreme of just one sin that we may commit separates us from God for eternity unless we grab a hold of the solution. And the solution is uh, Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, which is amazing that even as we would believe in something that happened 2,000 years ago, Jesus takes care of the sin issue in our lives and uh, we have eternal life in and through Jesus Christ. So um, sharing the gospel, the good news, is something that uh, the Holy Spirit would have us do uh, as we become believers and that we can share life with others and to, to uh, share with them the remedy to the sin issue which separates us from God. Um, we recognized the importance of, of Jesus' blood shed for us, the only agent that cleanses us from sin he is the blood of Jesus Christ so uh, this is something that needs to be mentioned uh, so when it comes to uh, the 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 problem we need to confess to the Lord that we are sinners Lord I'm a sinner and uh, that there would be a faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross you might say what well, how powerful is this for the person that that hung beside Jesus and we can read this in Luke chapter 23. As Jesus went to the cross, there were people gathered all around as he was being crucified and as he was crucified. And there were two men that were crucified Jesus, with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. And there was a, a mocking and jeering that went up from those that were in the crowd. And they, and they were saying, well, he, he saved others. Why doesn't he save himself? If he says he's, if he's the son of God, why doesn't he save himself? 
And the jeering continued on by one of the individuals that was hanging with Jesus. And there was a mocking as he said, if you are the son of God, save yourself and save us. And uh, so there, it was, there was a blasphemy that was in us. He was mocking the Lord Jesus. And um, at one point during the, the, the time that these three men were on the cross, they knew that they were going to die that day. They knew they were going to die. It was just a matter of time. They were dying already. But as they were hanging there, uh, the one, in, one man who was, we don't know how bad he was, but he was a wicked man. And he confessed his sin. He says, we deserve to be up here. We deserve what this consequence. And so in that admission, he confessed, I am a sinner. And this, as he said this, he said this to the other one that was mocking. He says, hey, we deserve to be up here. And as he turned to Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He re remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. He recognized Jesus as a king, as Lord, and that he had a kingdom. And the interesting thing is, to this man that could do nothing else but confess his sin and his faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus turned to him and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. That's amazing that this man could do nothing to earn his way into heaven and into the kingdom of God, but just by confessing his sin and believing in Jesus, this man came to know Jesus and to have eternal life. One day, I, I, I'm looking forward to meeting this man and who he was and to hear his account as he hung on the cross and, and uh, maybe some of the things he had done in the past, but more so that he had etern eternity ahead of him and in, in Jesus Christ, just by placing his faith in Jesus Christ. So sharing the gospel, do not underestimate the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as a person confesses their sin, as they place their faith in Jesus Christ and what, they, what he did for them on the cross, and as they invite Jesus into their life, they can have life. And it's amazing. You can help them in that. You can help them in leading them in a prayer, taking care of, of the sin issue, number one, and then and, and as there's a confess, confession of sin, secondly, uh, there is a confession and a faith in believing in Jesus Christ to save them from their sins. And thirdly, there's an inviting of Christ into their life so that they are born of God. Praise God. So um, those three things uh, are, are according to Scripture. And uh, there were a lot of uh, Scriptures presented last week. Listen to them again. Jot some of those Scriptures down. And uh, I, one thing I encouraged... Uh, and would encourage you is these scriptures are powerful in uh, remembering the gospel. And just, so that's not just, hey, I'm saying my own thing and what I think, but it is the word of God. You say, this is what the word of God says. So very powerful. Catch the, the message from last week. So tonight, um, I want you to recognize who we are uh, as believers. So if you're a believer tonight, uh, you're... Uh, position and uh, also your purpose before God is, is a, an amazing one. And so if you have your Bibles with you, I just want to read to you from Revelations chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6. Revelations 1, 5 and 6. And listen to who we are because of Jesus Christ and that we would begin to act according to who we are. It says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, here, here it is. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, as you have believed and as you, as you accepted the love of Jesus in your life and you allowed him to wash you in his blood you were made a king and a priest and so we are kings and priests unto god in first peter 2 verse 9 it says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation 
his own special people, that you may proclaim, you would let everybody know, the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Taken from darkness and brought into his marvelous light, that we would proclaim the one that has done that. And it says here, there is, we are a chosen generation, but this next uh, phrase in this verse talks about being a royal priesthood, royal, royalty, a king, kings or queens, if you would. But basically, we're talking about a position of authority. We have been given positions of authority, and it says a priesthood. The priest ministered two ways. The priests ministered to the people, so that's a horizontal ministry that took place to, our, to those that are around. And there was a vertical ministry that took place as they stood between God and man, uh, as this vertical uh, ministry would take place by the priesthood. There is a glorifying of Jesus Christ, a lifting up of Jesus Christ, uh, and exalting of him. But for us, that we, as a royal priesthood, that kings and priests would begin to minister in authority in his name by his blood and by the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can do that. So you have been given authority, even as a new believer, to be able to minister Jesus to others and begin to minister Jesus with others. It's amazing that the disciples, when they came to know Jesus, it wasn't very long afterwards. They, they figure that within two or three months after the disciples began to follow Jesus, the 12, he sent them out in twos and he, to go ahead of him in the different villages and, and places that he would be and to begin to proclaim the kingdom of God. We're talking within a few months. Uh, and even Andrew, who was uh, one of the first disciples, went to his brother, Peter, and said to, to Peter, Peter, you've got to come. I have met the Messiah. Come. And so uh, Andrew, just in meeting Jesus, when he, as soon as he met Jesus, he was already calling others to come to Jesus. It is something that we can do. Today, uh, the, the title today is Ministering Jesus to Others. And, and this will probably, I probably won't finish uh, everything. It'll probably take a few weeks for, to get through this. But um, for every ailment that a person may have, every problem, every spiritual batter, battle was taken care of by Jesus Christ on the cross. And Colossians 2 verse 13 says this, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is made alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. So it doesn't matter what your past is, what you're in. The Lord can give you life and bring you life. And we, as those that would share life with others and share Christ with others, we can present Jesus to others and get them place of being from, uh, from going from or being in dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, to becoming alive in Christ, to have new life in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what their past and how bad and dark it has been, we can bring them life in Jesus Christ. And Jesus, uh, in verse 14, it says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So all the things that would stand against us, they would say, hey, you're in wrong standing, you have... Uh, you're not in right standing. You, you cannot come into the presence of God. You, there are all these things that, that you failed to do or you broke and you couldn't keep. Uh, all of it was taken care of on the cross by Jesus Christ and his blood was shed. He died for us. And it says, having disarmed principalities and powers, you might say, what is that? We're talking every spiritual and demonic uh, element was overcome at the cross, having disarmed those that, that contingent that would be against us in the spiritual realm. He took care of it. He disarmed them, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. And in what? In his crucifixion. In his death, he overcame Satan and every single power and principality out there. And so every single problem that mankind faces 
there is a solution in Jesus Christ. And we'll, we'll see this as we uh, carry on tonight and as we continue on. So when we, ca we come against a problem that we may have in our own life or when we uh, are in touch with somebody, and it doesn't matter who you are, if you spend even the smallest amount of time with somebody, within a very short period of time, you get to know <laughs> where they're at. You get to know what problems they may be facing and what they're going through. And so um, you have an opportunity. Myself, I cannot bring life or give life uh, in myself to someone else. But the information that I have in me about Jesus Christ and, and what he's done for us, for I can bring, as I share Christ with them, they can have a solution to whatever problem they may be going through. doesn't matter what it may be. Every problem is taken care of by Jesus Christ. So as we look at Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, our faith will continue to grow personally and we can step out to do the exploits as kings and priests before God. We can step out to do those exploits in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what God has for each and every one of, of us that are believers to, to do these uh, exploits as kings and priests unto God because of what he's done and our faith is in him. Regarding our faith in him, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, went to the cross, he endured the suffering, the pain, the shame, all the sin that was put upon him, everything was put upon, upon him, and despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is not in a grave, but he overcame death. He overcame the things uh, of hell and even the power and dominion of sin. He overcame that, and he is on the right hand of the Father. So this aspect, you say, well, can Jesus deal with every aspect of man? And this is where uh, ministering Jesus to others, we can do uh, with them. So it's amazing. If you're equipped with this, uh, how... Inter, the interactions with others uh, will begin to become more and more exciting uh, as you minister Jesus to them. So I find it interesting. I don't know if you've uh, realized this, but there are four Gospels that we find in the Bible. So in, in the, the order that, that they've been placed in, uh, in the New Testament, we have Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew. And so Matthew was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. So he spent three and a half years with Jesus pretty well 24-7. And so we have uh, Matthew giving an account. He was a Jew speaking to Jews about a Jew, and that Jew being Jesus Christ. And he presents Jesus as the king a king of kings, a, a being above all. And uh, uh, Matthew, um, as he presents Christ as being king, uh, let me give you an example. So today I, have, I had a phone call, and the turmoil that's in a person's life, and the turmoil that, that was in their life, uh, and this person was proclaiming to be a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so I was affirming that in them, saying, hey, you, you said you've given your life to Jesus, and all these negative things are happening. But Jesus Christ not, needs to not only be our Savior, the one that saved us from our sins, but to be our Lord. So King and Lord, there's, there's this thing of, of uh, someone being over you, ruling over you, uh, you being... Uh, owned, if you would, by them. The amazing thing is that Jesus gives us opportunity to submit to his lordship. If we don't submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ, him being lord in our life, which means, okay, so I, I recognize that he is lord, and uh, as I do that, there is uh, things beginning to work out because a king always has decrees, a king has commands, a king has plans and purposes, 
and a good king would say, I want the best for those that are in my realm. And absolutely, God wants the best for you when it comes to your life here on this side of heaven. And so as Jesus becomes Lord in your life, there can be a complete shifting around of your existence. And um, uh, we're going to, we'll see, we'll probably get into this a little bit more today, but I just want to touch briefly before I come back to this, I want to touch on just the other three gospels as well. So Matthew is, uh, the, the focus is on Jesus as being king or Lord. And the amazing thing is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of them, they're called the synoptic gospels. And so there, there's a, a, a very close, uh, you can find many passages that are identical. And you might say, well, who is Mark? Was Mark another disciples? And a lot of times I remember thinking, well, I know four of the disciples of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, that's not the case. There's only two of those names mentioned were actual disciples, one of the original 12. Uh, they were all followers of Jesus, of course, but only two of them were uh, with Jesus for those three and a half years, uh, and he had called them, and that, that is Matthew and John. But Mark was around. Uh, he was very young. He probably would have been in his, uh, possibly in his early teens, 13, 14 years of age, and so was too young to be with going out three and a half years, 24-7. Uh, he was too young, but he, there was very much interaction with Jesus and the disciples. And in fact, they say that Mark was the first gospel that was written. And so it was uh, John Mark or Mark. Uh, and Mark uh, emphasizes the, the servanthood of Jesus. Not only is he king, Matthew presents him as king. Mark presents him as a servant, as healer. And if you read through the book of Mark or the, the gospel according, the good news according to John, uh, Mark, you have Jesus being presented as a servant healer that desires, he knows where, where, what your needs are at, at, he knows what they are, and he desires for you to come to him to deal with the needs that you may have. So whatever those needs may be, whether they're um, a health, whether their uh, relationship, whether their finances, whether whatever it may be, to bring healing. So we need to recognize, as as kings and priests unto God, that we can present Jesus as the one that can take care of your situations. Let me give you another example. Today, I spent time with an individual, and this person came in. And, and took probably about 15, 20 minutes sharing one thing after the other of their life and how negative it has been. There were, there were points of, of just breaking down and tears. Uh, with the, the extremes of life and the bondage that this was an individual was in. So to, to share Christ as healer, that, that Jesus can heal uh, your situations and and turn things around. There was this ministering to, uh, to this young man. And the amazing thing is, uh, the things that I'm going to share tonight, uh, I shared aspects of every single one of the emphasis and focus of who Jesus is with this young man. And one, one of them, one of the main things was that he would give his life to Jesus. And that is the, is the emphasis of John. John, just before you get to the final chapter, the last few verses of chapter 20. There's 21 chapters in, in the book of John. But John presents Jesus as Savior. And, and John says, there's many things that I could have written about Jesus. He says, the volumes would not be able to contain all the things that Jesus did and has done. And so they, they couldn't contain everything. But he says, I've, I have written these things so you read the book of John. I've written these things that even as you would hear them, that you would believe, and by believing in Jesus Christ, that you may have life. John emphasizes Jesus as Savior, Savior to save us from our sins. And um, uh, there's another aspect of Jesus Christ as Savior, the one that died for us uh, in bringing life, uh, not just from our sin, 
but also on a daily basis, and uh, we will get into that. I'm not sure if it'll be tonight, but uh, probably uh, tom uh, next time as we gather. So Jesus, Matthew emphasized Jesus as king. Mark emphasizes Jesus as healer. Uh, John emphasizes Jesus as savior. And going back to the third gospel, Luke, Luke was not a disciple of Jesus, the original 12, if you would. He, later on, as he gave his life to the Lord, uh, he, he was a follower of Jesus. But uh, Luke uh, emphasizes Jesus as the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. If you really want to love God, is be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you really want to share that love with others, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus is the one that baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And there's a focus of this leading into the book of Acts. So Luke also wrote the book of Acts. And it was the Acts of the apostles and the believers, the early believers, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So you have 28 chapters. When you get to chapter 28, it's like, hey, how come this book has not finished? It, 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 ends off, it doesn't even end off. It's like it, there's no end to it. Uh, there's no conclusion to it because, and I love this, is that those acts, acts in the power of the Holy Spirit should be done by us today. And um, so these four focus uh, need to be emphasized. Um, so uh, I, I just want to share a few things. And I'll, once again, I've got to watch my time here. Uh, so I don't know how far I'll get. But one of the things, uh, as we uh, minister to others, we're, we're talking about ministering to others, that we would minister in such a way uh, with a motivation of love and compassion. And uh, uh, that is how Jesus uh, began his ministry, uh, even as he began. It says he saw the multitudes. When he came, he saw the multitudes. We can read of that in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, the last four or five verses. He says he saw the multitudes and he was moved with compassion and he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And even as he saw them, he recognized immediately uh, he was limited. And I, I just, there's, even though he was fully God, he was also fully man, which means he was limited to be one person in one place at one time. And so with, with, he knew he only had so many years on this planet. He knew that he was going to die. He knew he was going to the cross. And the very first thing, as he made this statement to, uh, with the multitudes, there were already men that were around him. In fact, chapter 10 begins and gives a list of all 12 of the disciples that, that were committing themselves to following Jesus as he began ministry. And what he said, he, he said to them, he turned to them as he saw the multitudes, and he said, uh, the harvest is plentiful. There's a, there's a white harvest. There's not another, another three or four months, and then we take in the harvest. He says, the harvest is ripe now. And he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send out laborers into the harvest because the laborers are few. There's not enough laborers to take in the harvest. And we're not talking a, 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 a harvest of, of, of a farm crop. We are talking about a harvest of souls, of souls coming to life in Jesus Christ. And so this harvest is a, har is a good thing, is that people would come to Jesus. And so he recognized the importance of others, of his disciples, followers, ministering Jesus, the good news of Jesus Christ, with others. And so within a few months of them being followers of Jesus, he already sent them out to to make the way that, hey, Jesus is coming. You need to accept Jesus into your life. And so he sent them out at a very uh, uh, early time in his ministry. They came back all excited about, uh, about their encounters with others and also their encounters with the enemy, with Satan uh, and the demons and, and all that spiritual realm. And they were so excited that even the demons, they had authority over the demons. And I want to say to you, as you are choosing to be a minister to others, is that you have authority over the enemy in Jesus' name. And so they were excited. And Jesus says, hey, don't be excited about the fact that you have authority over the enemy, but rather that you would be excited about the fact that your name is written in the book of life. That's the main 
point of why Jesus came to have life and life eternal. And as we, as a person gives their life to Jesus, they have opportunity to have an eternity with God. So there's a motive, there was a motivation of, of love and of compassion that Jesus had, that we would have the same motivation. Um, there is a, a, when you connect with somebody, in fact, as you begin your day, say, Lord, I'm willing to be used by you. I'm willing to, uh, for you to work through me today in my day. And I, I know all of us, we usually have a routine or things that happen on certain days that we're going to do. And uh, at times there might be a change in our, our schedule or agenda, but uh, you might say, I'm too busy to minister to others. Let me challenge you at this time. If you make yourself available, Lord, and you may say, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a, you know, I haven't, I, I haven't known Jesus for a long time. I haven't believed on him for a long time. The Lord is saying, if you make your, yourself available to be used uh, and to, to have the Holy Spirit work through you, uh, you can touch other people's lives. So when you get up in the morning, right off the bat, just say, hey, Lord, I am available to be used by you. I submit to your lordship. I submit to your will being done in my life today. And you will be amazed at the open doors that will happen, whether you're at work or whether at school, uh, wherever you may be. I cannot believe how often I'm cutting my grass. And the how many conversation has started with neighbors and it has led very quickly. I just turn off, hey, somebody's there, you know, turning off the, the machine or uh, just catching your eye. There's a wave. There's a connecting. Uh, there's opportunity to share Christ with others as you make yourself available, available to be used with others. So, um, so to connect with others, whether you know them, whether it's a neighbor or a coworker or classmate, whatever it may be, or it could be somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Today, I met somebody for the first time, didn't know this individual, and uh, in that time that we were together, I uh, got to know where they were at and was able to minister Jesus Christ to them, to share the gospel with them. And there was a response in sharing the gospel. And so there was just an introducing, hey, you introduce yourself as you go along. Uh, just a, a few weeks ago, I was down by the falls. And uh, I, I said, Lord, you know who I'm supposed to speak to today. Lord, you know who I'm going to meet and uh, I had opportunity that morning uh, or early afternoon to take about half an hour to 40 minutes with an individual. And uh, we were just staring at the falls, at the American Falls. A guy was shooting his camera. And, and in my heart, I was already praying, God, I'm, I'm willing to be used by you. And as he stopped taking pictures, I, he was so intent in adjusting. I, I just started conversation with him and said, hey, uh, so what, what are you taking pictures of? I know you're taking pictures of the falls, but is there anything in particular? Well, what are you trying to catch? And there was a connecting which led from one thing to another. You'll be amazed how the Holy Spirit, if you are willing to be used by God, how the Holy Spirit will work through you. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be someone that went to uh, seminary or uh, Bible school or whatever just to be willing. Lord, use me. And to be able to know, I know what the gospel is. Go back, catch this, the, this, the session that we had last time on what the gospel is. Get familiar with it. Get to know some of the scriptures that, have to, that deal with the good news of Jesus Christ, that deal with sin, that deal with uh, getting, being born of God. These scriptures are, are it's good to have them as, as a repertoire, to memor, even to memorize them. And so you may not remember them word for word, but you know the gist of what those passages are saying and you are able to present the gospel. The Lord will allow for that to happen if you are willing. Um, so if you, if you are meeting up with somebody, just even making the statement, hey, listen, Jesus can meet or take care of every one of your needs. Or even as you're, you're just starting to have communication with them and something is coming up, uh, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and, and to be able to, to connect with that individual and just say, because a lot of times people will share, if you're willing to listen, will share uh, where they're at in their life or something will come up and they'll, they'll be able to say, hey, this is where I'm at. And oftentimes it is unfortunately negative. And 
for you to be able to go from that point of, of where they are at, their problem and their need, recognizing, hey, Jesus can take care of every need according to, to Mark. He is the healer. He's servant healer. He wants to do a work of healing in your life. And so whatever it may be, fi once again, health, finances, relationship, uh, whatever, uh, mental, emotional situations, the Lord desires to heal to the extreme. He is all-powerful, and He is able to do a work. Um, so as you recognize where their need is at, uh, you can begin to share with them. And one of the things is very quickly on, you will find out whether a person is a believer or not. And if they're not, the gospel according to John would be kicking in. Jesus as Savior. They need Jesus as, as their Savior. And so you can share with them the things you know about Jesus as Savior, the fact that there is a sin issue in our lives, in every life. And you can even use yourself today. When I was sharing with this individual about Jesus, it got to a point where I shared my own testimony with him. The life that he had lived was completely different than mine. I, I grew up in a pastor's home. I grew up, things were not extreme at all. They were good, but yet I needed Jesus. And so I was able to share how I gave, or how I came to the Lord. And you can use your own story of how you came to Jesus before you knew Jesus and how you came to Jesus. Be specific about the fact that you, there was a point of confession of sin. Uh, there was a faith in Jesus Christ. There was a receiving of Jesus into your life. And if you're a type of person, I know I've come across people, believers, uh, that don't remember a moment in time where they gave their life to Jesus. Usually they know exactly when it was, but there's times where they may not know. But as they've gone on, they've recognized what has separated them from God, which is sin. They recognize, I need to have my faith in the only one that can take care of sin, and that's Jesus Christ. The only thing that can take care of my sin is the blood of Jesus Christ washing me. And the only way that is applied is I, as I confess, Lord, I am a sinner. And it, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins immediately as we confess our sin, not to man, but to Jesus Christ. And so even today, I used my own story of salvation to bring another element of life a, a, a thing of reality that's happened to me, to this individual. The gospel doesn't matter where they're at. And this person was indicating things of extreme shame and, and guilt and, and frustration and uh, a bondage that they were under. And the Lord, according to the gospels, is able to take care of every situation. In this case, is, is as a person hangs on to it, the Lord can take them out of the quicksand and put them on solid ground. Him, Jesus being the solid ground. Um, so one of the things that uh, I, as you are connecting or communicating, interacting with somebody else, uh, that, that in the conversation uh, there might be a point of, of admit, an, an admittance of rough life or whatever to say, hey, you know what? Um, I want you to know that there is somebody that is able to take care of your need. Like, there are so many times where people come to me as a pastor and say, hey, this is what I'm at. It's like, what can I do? Nevertheless, there is somebody that can take care of the situation that I cannot. And the greatest, I want, I want you to realize this, as a believer, the greatest issue that a person has goes way beyond things of physical, the physical realm and health and finances and relationships, goes, comes down to the, the spiritual end of where they are at spiritually. So if they're not a believer, that is one thing where you need to steer them to the gospel, to the sin issue, to the solution, the problem issue, sin, the solution being Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross is death, burial, and resurrection, and an receiving of Jesus Christ into their life. So we share those things. We steer them to what is the biggest issue in a person's life, in any person's life, is, is sin. And the, the consequence of sin is separation from God. And God doesn't want for them to be in that place, but rather they would come to life in Jesus Christ. Um, it's interesting. Uh, 
the authority that we have in Jesus name and I want you to know this especially when you're ministering to somebody that's sick uh, and we'll, we'll get into more detail of this and I'm, I'm recognizing that yeah we're gonna take we're definitely gonna be going an, uh, another session or two just on the Gospels and, and, and how we can minister Jesus but I, I want you to know the, the power of Jesus name so even as you would lead someone to Christ you can say as you end off your prayer you can just say in Jesus name amen or in Jesus name we 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 come against the demonic influences in this person's life and we we bind them in Jesus name in um, uh, in Acts chapter 3 we read of a man that had that, that would come every day to the uh, the the steps that led up to the temple and so there were people coming and they were there were many people this is in Jerusalem like we're talking not just a few people but we're talking hundreds thousands of people would come on a daily basis and they'd be coming to the temple and so this man sat where the people were and he was begging for uh, for alms he, he, he needed uh, he couldn't work he was lame and the people got to know him because he was lame from birth and so they got to know who this man was and so uh, he would be on these steps and he'd be holding his cup or whatever out and people would give uh, to them or they would just walk past him and uh, you know we'll let somebody else deal with it when it comes to Peter and John as they came that day they came by and they saw this man and he was asking hey can you can you spare me some change can you spare me some money because I need I need some help and it's interesting what Peter says see the man was lame he couldn't walk and here Peter said silver and gold I don't have but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus get up and walk now that man his faith was not in a place to get up and walk but the power of Jesus name of Jesus name get up and walk in the name of Jesus of Nazareth get up and walk and he reached out his hand to lift him up to grab him by the hand and who knows maybe the, the guy was holding his hand out for something so Peter here took him by the hand and it says imme immediately there was a healing that took place that this man could feel and he, as even as he was being helped up because he may not have had the faith to believe that he could be healed he didn't know what was going on but he knew something was happening next thing it, he began to to run and to leap and to praise God like this guy had been there for decades like 40 years and he's unable to move and here he is now walking and praising God and they asked about the healing and I, I want you to recognize when you minister to others whether you're praying for them or talking to them about Jesus to recognize the power of Jesus name even as you talk about Jesus and what Jesus did for that person on the cross for their healing or for their situation or for their salvation and so when they asked how did this man get healed listen to what Peter says this is Acts chapter 3 verse 16 Acts chapter 3 verse 16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yes the faith which comes through him has given this given him this man this lame man this perfect soundness in the presence of you all so let me read again and his name Jesus name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know so it wasn't their power it wasn't the power of Peter it wasn't the power of John but it was faith in Jesus name in who Jesus is that allowed for healing to come I want you to recognize the power that you have in Jesus name to bring life to others to minister to others we cannot save we cannot heal we cannot baptize in the Holy Spirit we cannot make Jesus King in anyone's life it is Jesus alone 
that does this by our faith in his name and the choice of an individual to accept the ministry of Jesus in their life. So as they accept who Jesus is and the ministry that he wants to, to do in their life, they can have wholeness come in, at every level, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, every level, physically, can come to that person through Jesus' name. How does Jesus minister through us? He ministers by the Holy Spirit. And this is where I, I sort of alluded to the fact that Luke wrote the book or the, the gospel according to Luke, but he also wrote the gospel according to, or the, the, uh, the book of the, the Acts of the Apostles. Luke, the emphasis of Luke was Jesus as the baptizer and the Holy Spirit. And one of the aspects of the Holy Spirit in your life, and I, the moment you may say, well, when does the Holy Spirit come into my life? The moment that you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. But to have life flowing out from you, rivers of living water flowing from you, comes with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, where we are fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, who would baptize me in the Holy Spirit? It's Jesus Christ that baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, hey, that there can be rivers of living water flowing from you. And so as the waters of the Holy Spirit flow from you, life flowing from you, as you share the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody else, there's this, this germination of the, the word of God, of the seed the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's a, the possibility for that person to come to life in Jesus Christ, to be ministered to by Jesus Christ. So the, the, the acts of the apostles and, and the followers of Jesus Christ was in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. As a believer, you need the Holy Spirit to be that, the one that empowers you and allows you to be a witness onto Jesus, a witness onto Jesus of, of your love for him and that your, his love will flow through you to touch other people's lives. We need the Holy Spirit powerfully. And uh, I would say, uh, just to close off this, this session here about ministering Jesus to others, um, if you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And if you just want to get an idea of, of some of this, read chapter, Acts chapters 1 and 2. In fact, read the last chapter of Luke and then the next chapter or the next book of Acts uh, comes after the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the book of Acts. So if you read the last chapter of Acts or of, of uh, Luke and then the very first two chapters of the book of Acts of which he, he wrote uh, in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you have an opportunity to just get an inkling of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life uh, to, to touch and minister to others. Uh, Peter, in one session, one opportunity to speak to people. There were 3,000 people that were saved in just one session of speaking Jesus, of speaking life to them. 3,000 people were there. They heard and they were saved on that day as they believed in Jesus Christ. And the Lord wants to work through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. G Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he began to speak in the power of the Holy Spirit. The same man, the difference being that the Holy Spirit was flowing through him. Life, 3,000 people saved. Seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. So with that, we want to close today and uh, it's good to have the studio audience with us today. And uh, for all of you online, uh, as you catch this, uh, it's been good to be with you. Let me just close in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for uh, the fact that you want us to be a part in ministering to others, to be kings and priests unto others. And I just, I thank you for this, Lord, that, that you pull us in. In fact, you give us the, 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 not just the responsibility, but the joy of ministering to others because it is so exciting when we see the power of God flowing through us to, to touch other people's lives to the point of their li life being changed. So exciting. And so, Lord, I pray today as we have we heard uh, about the fact that we are kings and priests and as we have heard 
that uh, there are different aspects uh, of, of the Gospels that are focused and emphasized uh, regarding who you are. Lord, that you can cover and take care of every single issue in a person's life according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and who you are, Lord, in these, these beautiful books written. And so, Lord, I, I just pray that, uh, that we would be used by you to touch other people in the time that we have left. And, Lord, to recognize that I don't have to be a pastor. I don't have to be uh, off to Bible school for four years or whatever length of time. But, Lord, you can use me immediately as I make myself available and, and just surrender to you, Lord. Say, here I am. Use me. So, Lord... I pray that there will be a mighty using of you, uh, of us by you, Lord, by your spirit uh, to minister life to others, to minister Jesus, to minister you to those that don't know you, Lord, for your glory and for your honor and for their sake, they would have life. I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of our live streams. Um, at lighthousenagar.com at 10 o'clock every single week. Have a great day. God bless.